Welcome back, people, to the first video of the year of 2020. I am here. I am back. I know I've been away for a little while. I've been taking a little break, and I appreciate your patience. And welcome back to the new subscribers that followed me on the last video on the uh, honkity honkity honk honk video, which there is a part two coming out. I've got a very special part two coming out. I'm not rushing it, so that one will be coming soon maybe the video after this one but yeah i want my quality of my content to still be pretty on point in today's video we're going to talk about the phaser build i've actually done two videos on this and the links are in the description but basically my phaser engine blew and i decided to take a crack at rebuilding the engine myself so let's get into it The engine there has completely blown through, completely blown through. It's not looking great. So there's oil everywhere. So before you guys start asking if it had oil, it did have oil and no, it wasn't on the minimum. I had checked. And as you can see, there's a big long line there as well. Well, as you can see from that video, it wasn't really ideal. Nothing that any biker really wants to have happen to them. I had no experience in building an engine before, but I thought I'd give it a crack. And I thought I'd explain a little bit to you about the process and about a few questions that were asked after I finished that video or that two-part video series. So I did actually capture some embarrassing moments uh, to prove to you how inexperienced I am. One of them is this. Take a look, see if you can guess what's wrong here. Yes. Embarrassingly enough, I didn't realize that just next to where I was uh, using the screwdriver to remove the fluid, there was actually a little bolt there that was actually to drain the coolant. But uh, you know what? This just proves to you that I didn't really read through the manual of the phaser before actually doing the work. I actually took everything apart first and only when I had everything out and dismantled that was the moment that I started reading up about the engine itself. I wanted to see if I could do it myself. And yes, it's much easier to take things apart than it is to put things back together. The second thing that I made, you know, a huge mistake uh, was the amount of oil I was using to lubricate the um, bolts, the internal bolts. And I ended up snapping it because, well, it had too much oil and it couldn't tighten it up or, or I couldn't feel, the torque wrench couldn't feel anyway. Um, what I was tightening up to and, and, it, and it just went, it snapped and well, take a look. That was a very annoying, frustrating part of the whole journey, to be honest, because I had to take that thing apart and um, I was even considering leaving just one of the bolts not actually tightened or, or, or there because I was thinking about just leaving it. But I thought, you know what, I've gone through this whole amount of work. It's best to just take everything apart and see if I could get it out. And it was actually very simple and very easy to remove because actually the thread, the, the bolt or, or the part that was left inside is actually quite easy to take out. Right, so a lot of you might be asking, what actually happened to my engine? The main culprit was this, which I'm going to come to explain in a moment. There was a chain slapping sound uh, whilst I was riding the bike. It was a very minute, very small sound to begin with, and it just gotten worse and worse and worse. And I, I really should have stopped and, and got my bike towed home. But I decided not to and continued riding until it went bang. That is why we have this situation now. Okay, let's first talk about what I think the issue was. So number one, my timing tensioner, the tensioner bolt, uh, seized. When I removed it, it was completely in and I couldn't actually take it out. So I had to replace the tensioner bolt. They're not cheap, they're quite expensive. And I think that partly the reason of it seizing was this unit. On the phaser, this is a water pump and oil pump, which is a one, one unit, comes as one unit. It's a sealed unit. Part, half of it is for oil and the rest of it is for the coolant to run through the engine. So this is spinning on the chain, which is actually this chain. This is the bottom half of the crankcase. And this is the crank shaft. 
So the crankshaft spins like so. And as you can see, you've got different points, some which are higher, some which are lower. And that is normally connected to conrods. Conrods are then connected to your pistons. For example, that is a piston with a conrod attached to it. So this is your conrod, this is your piston head. And then you've got the bottom part of your conrod. As the crankshaft spins, this will go down and back up. Like so, it's pretty straightforward, right? But obviously at a much faster rate. <laughs> I don't even know how that's happened. I don't even know how that is even possible. And you can see this big hole here. So what happened was this came loose and then it hit the case pretty hard, causing this hole. So you can now see the full extent of the hole. So both parts of the crankcase were gone. And then normally this, which are your barrels, your barrels now sit on top. Yeah, that will literally fit up and down, but obviously inside the barrel itself. But I had to replace the barrels because you'll see this crack here. I ended up replacing the crankcase cover. Of course, the crank shaft itself, the barrels, the pistons, the conrods, new water pump, oil pump. This is the condition of the original head gasket. It was in pretty good condition. So this base gasket would sit, would sit there, the barrels on top, followed by your head gasket. So your head gasket sits here. Now, because of the pressure between the piston and the valves, right? There's, the, there's a little pocket and that's where all the, the bang happens. And if the gasket blows, all these little holes and pockets, which actually run coolant and oil through the engine to either keep it lubricated at the top of the head where the valves are and the camshafts, or whether it's cooling the engine itself, right? When they blow, it will then start mixing with other parts in the engine. And if you ask me, would I do it again? 150% I would definitely do it again. This has been such an interesting journey and one that I'm really actually proud of. And I'll tell you something, I've achieved many things in my life, but for me, the most epic, most interesting um, experience and, and, and the most fulfilling experience has been to rebuild this engine and push that starter button and hear it tick. I can't even explain how epic it felt. <laughs> you motherfuckers! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> First of all, time-wise, it took me six weeks to disassemble the engine, take it apart, see what the problems were, order new parts in, um, rebuild the engine and install it onto the bike. That took me six weeks. Now that's six weeks doing it part-time. I work full-time, um, so it was doing it over the weekends and it was doing it when I got home in the evenings. Um, it was a very messy job. I did it here in this very living room, um, which was quite interesting. Um, but I managed to do it and it was, it was, as I said, just bloody epic. Now in terms of costings, I decided the other day to have a look at how much I spent. So I spent just under two and a half thousand pounds to rebuild this bike. Now that does include the cost of rebuilding the engine as well as doing some small modifications to the bike itself because I decided, although I loved the look of my phaser the way I had it, I decided, well, I'm rebuilding the engine, so I might as well give it a new look. Um, so I bought new headlights and new LED indicators and, and uh, levers and all those kind of things. So um, let me quickly bring on to the screen so you can see all the different things that I spent money on.
my sexy people. <laughs> on the bike. Yeah, on the bike. Oh, she feels so good. And she sounds so nice. Listen to that. Beast of a bike. Come on. Yeah, she has got a decat on her. So she sounds flipping loud. And she pops and bangs. Like there's no tomorrow. I still got work to do to her, to be honest. Things like on these bars, they need to be sprayed in black. It's gone rusty because I sanded it down to do a test. Um, did a little test on this uh, fuel tank here to do plastic dip, but it didn't last very long on the bit, which is now silver. So yeah, got a little bit of cosmetic works to do. Planning on cutting off the rear seat eventually at some point. Got no rear foot pegs, so I can't even have a pillion on here. Yeah, so a little bit more work to be done, but she is, is oh, just, she's just beautiful to, to ride, to look at, to, to smell. Ah. And I get quite a lot of looks on this bike, you know, like on the KTM is one thing. And I didn't really get them. Oh, there's the LC500. Um, I didn't really get the same looks on the original look of the phaser that I did on the KTM. Like ride the K when I ride the KTM around, everyone's staring. And I think it's the presence, how big it is. <laughs> I'm looking forward to doing another build. So if you guys want to head over to my Patreon page, it's actually, there's a link in the description below and there's also a link on my channel itself. But if you go and head over to my Patreon page, if you want to support me, it's going to be epic because we're going to do some really amazing series where we're going to do some bike builds and give them away to one of the Patreons. <laughs> Love her, love her. Oh, the feeling. And the fact that I've done it myself. I still can't get over that. Yeah, so she's done. Uh, let's have a look at the mileage now because I've been riding her for some time now. Come on. Uh, she's done. What's she done? 46,771,000 miles. And I blew her at 40, 44 and a half or something. The only thing is since, <laughs> since doing the decal on the bike and obviously since the build, um, and I, I, I could actually do with adjusting the idle slightly down. She is drinking a little bit more than she originally used to. But that, I mean, that, that I got no concern with that. Again, I'm not using it to commute. I'm not using it um, to go touring or anything. So it's to enjoy it, to listen to the crackles and the bangs. And it's just too good. Oh, it's too good. I just love it. And honestly, the feeling of the, the, the fact that because I've built it, that's always constantly in the back of my head. And it's just a feeling I can't, I don't think I'll be able to get rid of. I mean, I don't want to get rid of it. Maybe the novelty will wear off eventually. Come on. So now I know every little sound in this bike. So any small sound that I can hear, I'm, I'm immediately understanding where it's coming from. And that's the good thing about doing an engine build or doing any engine works. And then again, I, I've said it before in the past about you flipping mug. I've said it in the past before about doing the work yourself rather than taking it to a mechanic because there are so many shortcuts that a mechanic can make. And, and that I don't like. And now I'm, I'm more concerned about literally having someone working on my bike and not finishing it properly. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. Feel free to go and check out my Patreon. And thank you for watching to the end. Peace.
Also, I've shut these curtains actually because, well, you wouldn't be able to see these products very well because the light's shining through and these lights are pretty good, but the sun is, yeah, way brighter.